open up for you. And I thought that was good until I got a job working downtown. And there is a building that has what's called a revolving door. And it will tell you that the door is not going to move on its own. But if you get in and push, here it is, more than one person can go through the door at the same time. Could it be I'm almost about to get started? But in this year, there are some doors that are revolving that God is saying, can you push? Here it is, not just so that you get in, but there's people connected to you that can go in too. There are some doors that we want to be automatic. And God is saying in 2024, I need you to push so that other people connected to you get broken. Okay, yeah. And so I was I was looking at this particular song because it opens up. Here it is by saying that they that dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That, that, that sounds good. Uh, here it is. Before you get to the promises of God, you got to know the address of God. The text says that they that dwell. Uh, that word in the Hebrew is also translated inhabitant and to remain. Inhabitant and to remain. Which lets us know this isn't just a door that you find, this is a door that you live in. Yeah. Okay, let me put it another way. Uh, in 2024, it's not enough for God to be the door if I don't make the choice to also dwell there. And while it seems simple enough, we can miss Revelation with the wrong translation. Okay. I don't often read the, new, uh, the King James Version, but sometimes you gotta go back so you can go forward. In the King James it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, this isn't just a door that you find. This is a secret door. Which means if the shelter is secret, the door has to be secret. What are you trying to say? In, in 2024, the only way this new year is going to bring you a new door is if you have new desperation. <laughs> because it's easy for desperation to get a bad rap. You, you, you've heard people say that, that uh, they, they are desperate. It usually means you lack values or morals that you, you'll settle for anything or anybody. Yeah. That you don't have no respect for yourself. That you got low self-worth, low self-esteem. You, you desperate. Some people may say you thirsty, too easy. You go along and get along. There's, there's all kinds of negative connotations for people who are deemed desperate. So it's easy not to want to be desperate. I, I don't want to be desperate. I want to be strong. So you find that we become strong people raised by strong black women. Strong black men. I'm, I'm strong. I'm not desperate. I don't need anybody or anything. I'm, I'm strong in who I am and where I come from. I, I don't have to be desperate. But the Bible says that there is something about being desperate that gets you blessed. Yes, 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 yes. Because yes. God showed me a desperate woman who had been six for 12 years and decided to crawl just to touch him. He showed me a man that was short and so desperate that he kind of tricked him because he heard Jesus was going his way. He showed me four desperate Listen, I'm not hating on you, I just want different from me. 
see in this season, I'm desperate. I don't want to point at everybody to find. I need the secret place. So I'm looking at the text, and the psalmist goes on to say that not only do you, do you dwell with the most, uh, most high end, live with the, the Almighty, but He is my refuge and my fortress. And whom I trust. <laughs> yes. So now the question that comes, because we don't really hear in 2024, hey, you want to come to our refuge? Hey, I'm cooking today at my fortress. That's not how we talk in 2024. So what is a refuge and what is a fortress and how do they differ from just a regular dwelling? Uh, I remember when I was in I was in high school, um, and Hurricane Katrina came through. And they said that this school year, we're going to be getting refugees from Louisiana. I have a friend right now that still lives in Texas to this day because they are a refugee from Louisiana. It was so bad, I'm not going back. A refugee is a person who is seeking refuge. In other words, I'm just coming for somewhere where I can feel safe. Amen. Looking for a refuge? Probably safe. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's not a fortress. Yeah. A fortress carries the connotation that not only are you safe here, you are also protected here. Yeah. Yes. Refuge means you can come in. Yes. Fortress means those who can't come in won't come in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, this um, this can be better defined by saying a dwelling becomes a fortress when you set the alarm. Mm. Uh, I grew up in a different generation, and there are people who were born before me, they were also in this generation, they were called latchkey kids. Yeah. Right? We can't do that now in 2024. But when we grew up, around the time you was about 10, 11, but some of y'all was looking at me, but we're not going to judge our parents. You got a key to the house. And your parents gave you strict instructions. Because they typically had to be at work at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning before you had to go to school. So they said, before you leave the house, lock the door. When you come home, I'm not going to be here. Guess what? Because I'm still going to be at work. When you get here, lock the door. Don't answer the door for nobody. The house became a fortress. And that was good for the 90s. And then breaks and all of them came along. And I remember us getting my first alarm system. And it was weird because now it don't mean that you have to lock the door. But you have to remember to set, set the alarm. Yeah. I remember the first time the alarm went off and I came in, they told us our pin number. Because there's a keypad, and you put in a four-digit pin number. I'm not going to tell you that number, because that number been the same for about 30 years. <laughs> we might need to change the pin number. <laughs> <laughs> we creatures are happy. But not only. Do you have to put the pin number in? But I remember as a kid, I came in, the alarm went off, I put the pin number in, then the phone rang. The phone rang because it was the alarm company. They said, is everything okay? I said, yo. They said, what is the password? I'm not going to tell y'all the password because I don't know if the password is still the same 30 years out of the But I told them the password and that was when they knew I live there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, are you, what are you trying to say? I asked my dad, why do we need a pen and a password? He said, because people can learn a pen just by being close to you. You got to be living here to know the password. Could it be in 2024 that we have people in the house of God that have come close enough for so long, you know the pen, but because you don't live here, you don't know the password. What's the pen? Well, you know when you come in the house of God and people say, how you doing? And it's I'm blessed and highly favored. That's a pen. When people come into the house of God and say, God is good all the time. 
the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks the darkness, nor the destruction that comes in the noonday. Some theologians think that Moses wrote this song because he wrote Psalm 90. Some think David wrote it because it carries some familiar themes from songs that he has written in the past. Here's the thing, I don't care who wrote it. If you start talking about terror at night, uh -huh. arrows in the day, yeah. pestilence in the dark, yeah. destruction in the new day, what, what time of the day is safe, Jesus? Yeah. Night, day, new day, dark. Yeah. And, and it's funny because it was written thousands of years ago, but it sounds a lot like today. Yes. Still got people dying from COVID. Yes. Afraid to send the kids to school. Yes. People storming the capital. Jesus. Church is not safe. Yeah. Yeah. Texas have an ice storm every year. This ain't safe no more. Even down to simple things, eggs and milk is five dollars. This my bank account not even safe. He's not. Not only am I not safe, my money not even safe. So the reason I'm so desperate is because life is dangerous. Life is life is hard. So the song is saying this is why dwelling in the secret place of the Most High is so important. Because you need a door to be able to escape all the danger around you. Yes, 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 yes. And often if the enemy can't make you bad, he'll make you blind. Yes. <laughs> because in 2024, Pastor put it one way on last week, sin is fun. <laughs> and there are some doors that you choose to go in that you know are dangerous because society has told you on the other side of that door is fun. They're driving your car and when you have to go drink at the club, that's fun. <laughs> They're going to get high as this, it's fun. They're sleeping around entertaining multiple partners, that's fun. And society has tricked us into thinking that some of the doors that we walk through aren't dangerous, they're fun. And so there's no need to be desperate. Just having fun. So we really don't feel the terror at night or destruction during the day or arrows in the fire. We don't. We don't fear it because we don't think it will happen to us. And there are some doors that we choose to walk in, and there are some doors that we don't choose to walk in because we think that we are safe from where we are. But this text is clear you're only safe when you have the right address. Because it goes on to say, because you have made the Lord your refuge. Even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. That's right. Thank you, God. Okay, so now we have to change. We have to change perspectives because we just we just dealt with with refuge and for, with refuge and fortress, but we really didn't deal with why it's so important that this is also dwelling. Because refuge is where I come when I need to feel safe. Dwelling is where I go. Here it is. When I know I'm related. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Put it another way. Um, in this season in my life, uh, we have had certain people come and stay with us. In this season, we stay with my folks. Because we have plans to try to build a house. 
I am able to stay at that dwelling because of the status of my relationship. Come on, come on. If you know my parents, you know a lot of people come in and out of that house. Some of them come looking for refuge, a safe place, a safe place to have a conversation, safe place to have a meal, safe place just to sit down and watch TV. Here it is, but it's not there. Dwelling. How do you know? Because there's no evidence to support that they stay there. What do you mean? There's no pictures on the wall of them. They close my Come on now. What are you trying to say? Some doors haven't been opened for you and will not be opened for you because you have a propensity to see God's house as refuge, but you never allow it to move to dwelling. Here it is, because when he looks for proof of your presence, he can't find it. Because when you come in the house of God, ain't no toothbrush with your name on it. You ain't got no clothes in the closet. He can't find no shoes. Ain't no pictures on the wall. So here it is. People say, do, do you live here or do you just do, this? do you just go here? And there are some people that go to destiny, but you don't live in destiny. And God is saying in 2024, if you want some doors to open, you don't have to take up residence somewhere. Find somewhere and live because you got to quit doing all this house hopping and trying to find things that make you feel safe and get to work that'll make you feel fed. Some doors are open because you just like house hopping. When God looks around, can he find proof of your presence? Or you do just come and stay for a little while. Here it is. Do you just come and stay till you feel good and then leave? I just said, Jesus said, they'll know that you belong to me by your fruit. You get no fruit if you plant no seed. And some of us are guilty of coming in the house looking for fruit and we ain't never planted no seed. Because we just want to come in and get what we want and then leave. We don't live here though. But I was just looking at the text. I, I don't want to rough in the The text says, as we move to our, our focus portion, that because he holds fast to me in love, I'll deliver him. Here, here's what I love. That, that word actually says, because he set his love on me. We often equate love to a feeling, not an action, but it says because he set his love, because, because his love was so much love, it held fast. In other words, it carries the connotation in the Hebrew to literally cling or to cleave with the intention of never letting go. Put it another way. Um, in boxing, when you get hit and you are about to faint, and you are about to fall, your, your coach, your quarterman will tell you, don't fall, clinch. Not because you have strength, but because there's somebody else in the ring that has strength that you need to make it through the end of the round. That's the connotation this is saying, is that the love is so strong that when I would fall, yes. I have clenched so hard because I know in and of my own strength, I wouldn't make it. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus. Yes, that's a good word. Put another way, that's why the Bible says, now unto him who is able to keep you from He can keep you from falling if you have held fast yes. in love. 
But it's not just that you hold, but who you hold. Because the text then says, I will deliver because he knows my name. Uh, some doors don't open because you did the first part. You, you held fast with love. Uh, you just holding the wrong love. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is this door locked because I'm holding on to the wrong thing or the wrong person or the wrong place? Who is it that I'm holding on to that's keeping this door locked? Amen. Says I will deliver and I'll protect because he knows my name. I'm done, but it's important to understand that even promises of provision and protection can be a precursor to a door to see just how desperate you are. Because there's a verse in this song, in, in verse 11, it says, he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways on their hands. They will bear you up, lest your foot strike the stone. Where, where have I heard that before? Oh, that's right. I, I, you hear it in Matthew 4. When the devil tempts Jesus, the Bible says that the devil takes him to the holy city, to the highest pinnacle. And he says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. And the devil said, because it is written, he will give his angels charge over you. And those angels will bear you up and keep your foot yes. from striking the stone. Here's what's hard about that. Is that what's actually written? The devil did not. Yeah. That is what is written, but that is not what is meant. And sometimes we get so desperate to walk through new doors that we try to give new meaning to God's word. That's what, that's what Eve did. It's not that she didn't know the word. It's that she allowed the devil to give it new meaning. Is that what God really said? And so because the devil is a devil that specializes in patterns, he used the same thing that worked for Eve on Jesus. I know the word. I want to know, do you know it as well as you should? It is because when you get desperate, when you get desperate, because all desperation ain't good desperation, you'll try to change the meaning. So he knew Jesus was hungry, just like Eve was. He knew that taking him on the top of the holy city, so he said he would look good, just like the fruit looked good to Eve. But more with Jesus, he knew he hadn't started his ministry yet. Knew he had just been told that this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. I want to know, do you really trust what God said to you? Because it's not that God didn't say it. Often our testimony, if we can walk through new doors, is do we believe it? Because the test is can you trust that the door is yours before you walk through it? In, in other words, let me make it personal. I know you're desperate, but don't you know that the door is already in this room? Yeah. Jesus. I, I, I've been learning a lot in this home buying process. And so when we found a home that we liked, they asked us to put down earnest money. Earnest money just means I'm serious about it. Earnest money is not escrow. Earnest just says, this is a house that I want and I don't want nobody else to want it. And some of us, you put down earnest money, but you're not in escrow. What is escrow preach? Escrow is when you have mutually agreed and the money is being held. Here it is until closing happens. What does that have to do 
with the text. Okay, my focus text says, because he loves me, and because he sets his love on me, because he holds fast to me in love, I'll rescue him. I'll protect him because he knows my name. He's going to call me. I'm going to answer him. When he's in trouble, I'm going to deliver him, and I'm going to honor him and satisfy him with my salvation. God said, because humanity, because humanity messed up the door I had designed, I'm going to build a new house. Not only am I going to build a new house, I'm going to build it from the foundation of the world. So when Jesus was born, salvation went into escrow. So when the devil got to Jesus and said, if you are who you say you are, throw yourself off because the angels won't let your foot strike. At that moment, Jesus has a question to ask himself. Do I believe that the door is already mine? Do I believe that salvation is already in escrow? Or do I trust that the devil has a better house that God has already built? Could it be that in that moment, Jesus said, you can't get me what's already
where you are there's peace where you are there's joy yes. where you are there's contentment so God I pray right now that you would give everyone under the sound of my voice the doors of their desires that you would make us desperate for you that you would give us strength to know the door that you have for us has already been built it's just in that and it's just waiting on us to close we thank you this day, in this moment, this time, in this space, I pray that you are, that you are pleased with us. We walk in expectancy of closing day. In Jesus' name, amen.
God, we're also preparing to give. We pray for those who don't have a roof over their heads who are out in this. I can't imagine. We are a little chilly. <laughs> it doesn't compare. Things that we think are rough, <laughs> they're not comparable to other people's plans. So keep those who, who don't have a roof over their head. They're stuck out in this. Stuck out even in worse conditions in this. My, my friend in Indianapolis said, man, pray for me. Yes, he said, pray for him. Because we expected like eight inches. We're not quite sure how we're going to do church tomorrow. Because after COVID, people move addresses. And a lot of people have moved their address to the sofa and to the bed. And, <laughs> and, and God has not become, it's no longer a priority. So, so pray. Pray. Peter comes. I, I just want to say for those of you, and I, I, I'm grateful for those of you online. I thank God for those of you from whatever country or continent and city, state, wherever you worship with us online. I thank God for you. Those of you who came in, came in the house and pressed your way. We, we last night we, we were having discussions. I said, God, you know, me and Pastor Peter, I was like, look. You know how people can get. If they think something won't be happening, if they think a drop, if they if the temporary drops just to a point, man, people are just so fickle now. So we were wrestling whether or not we should just have a skeleton crew and just just. And, and I uh, the, the Lord, <laughs> Lord has a way. You can ask PJ. I can't. <laughs> I don't know if he was like, I wouldn't even talk with you about it. I just came in and I said, hey, we have a church tomorrow, and what we going to do, just, hey, just prepare. Like, people just going to come. We don't mean sending out no plans from them. We going to have church. And they to get mad until tomorrow. That's Monday. We talk about Sunday. It's going to be cold, but we going to have church. And I, I, now I know why you were looking at me like, you like, I wouldn't even talk to you. <laughs> Nothing about. Amen. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for pressing. Because I know it was uncomfortable. It, it, it's supposed to be warm in here, this not. I thank you for not allowing temperature to taint your testimony, to keep you from receiving that word. Because that today, he can preach that same sermon every Sunday for the rest of the next two, three months. Yeah. That, that, right, that word right there was like John crying in the wilderness. Yes, 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 yes. That word right there was nothing short of God. So thank you, Pastor PJ. Pray for those that you don't see. Pray for those who come through your mind. Send them a text. Say, hey, man, I know it's, well, it's kind of bad. Just check and see. Hope everything's all right. Check on people. Do that for me. Before I really come, I want you guys to have an amazing Martin Luther King weekend. Weather's supposed to be kind of iffy, whatever. Whatever you do, stay safe. Um, Thank God first. Find a password. Yes. yes. I got it. Find a password. Let's have our agreement. Have an amazing, amazing week. We love you guys so much. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. PJ.
and PJ talking about desperate. Are you desperate? Yes, I am desperate. I'm desperate. And God telling me to get back into this word. That was just confirmation for me today to just get back in my word so I can get no enough word to get past. Recover with authority and rejoice with Thanksgiving. Y'all have a good week.